Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode two of Conversation Farters. Welcome back. Thanks for that yeah. feedback, by the way. That was very nice. Yeah, episode one was really fun to make. It was a little rough, but I think that we tried our best. And Hopefully, these next couple episodes will be way better. Yeah, it'll get better and better as um we make more and more episodes. This week, we're going to talk about something different. Last week, we talked about kind of animation. There wasn't a huge theme to it. But this week, we're just going to be talking about the art supplies that me and Brett use. So Brett is mainly, well, he primarily uses digital I've dabbled in digital art. I've been doing it for a couple years. So first, some software. The one that I primarily use for sketching and just basic art, that's called Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. I think I have 6.8 or something like that. It's easy to understand. It's not very complicated. It's not a vector program, which is a bit of a bummer, but it's just nice and basic. Is it free? The one that I got is not free. It costs... Um, $67 or $65 when I got it. Okay. But that's like pretty inexpensive for all the features that it gives you. Most people that I know online that make web comics and stuff, they'll use Psy, Paint Tool Psy, which people seem to really like. And I think that one of the reasons that people really like it, it reminds me a lot of um, Photoshop. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Like the way that you can customize your brushes, the way you, the layout is, the way that you can adjust your canvas and everything. So apparently Paint Tool Psy is not a vector program, but you can get a vector tool for it. But I've, I'm just caught in Sketchbook Pro. I'm not going to like review it, but here's what you can do with it. Gives you a ton of different brushes from pencils to pens. Gives you uh, various colors. It comes with a Copec library. So a bunch of preloaded brushes that emulate Copecs. You can also make uh, a feature called Flipbook, which is like basic animation. It only gives you three layers to work in. It's pretty limited, but it's basic enough. And that's actually what I made my first couple YouTube videos on. So it's functional. I know Fire Alpaca is really good, and I'm pretty sure it's also a vector. Okay. My, one of my first forays into digital art was actually like last night. I was on my Wacom Bamboo tablet, and I was drawing. It was me and a couple other people. We were using Draw Pile. Which it's like Skype, but instead of a video call, it's just a canvas, and everybody's drawing at once. And it was, cool. it was me and a couple other guys that are really amazingly more talented than me, but like Steak Robot, um, The Insanium, Clumsy Martian, like really good people. That'll link to in the description because I love them dearly and they're awesome. Digital art is definitely a challenge, especially for the first couple months. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about tablets. I've only used Wacom brand, so I don't know about Hueyon. I don't know about the other uh, lesser known brands. I do know that Wacom is it's very reliable. The tablets that I've used, I don't think any of them really broke. The one that I currently have is a Cintiq Companion 2. It's really awesome. It has a screen that I can actually draw directly onto. That's the main reason that I got it. Because before, I was using a Bamboo Fun, like a really old model that's outdated. They don't make it anymore. My brother got us a Wacom Intuos Pro, like the small one. And that was for my little brother and sister. And I was like, can I use that? And they were like, yes. It's not super good. But again, it's functional if you're a beginning digital artist. I think that a lot of people would draw, like, whatever they're doing on paper, scan it in, and then fix the image so it's just black and white. And they just color using that little tablet. Because you can do that pretty easily, and it's better than doing the whole, like, all the line work. I think it functionally work well as that, rather than a full drawing tablet. It's like half the size of the average laptop screen. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. A lot of people look at digital art, and when they start, they just do, they just go into the program and they just sketch and they just color and they just do this and that. But like the professionals, you'll notice they only use digital art at certain points in their creative process when they're making a comic or something. Um, so they could do like the pencils on actual paper and then they scan it in and they do the inks or they could do ink and everything on paper and they just like color digitally. Jake Parker is, since he records his process so thoroughly and he, and he like shows his process like a lot on YouTube and stuff, he will sketch on the computer, print it out, ink with a brush, and then scan it back in to color it. Or sometimes he'll color with some markers, which he's really good at. He's just an amazing artist, but his process of computer, brush, and then back onto the computer is really interesting. Because it turns out really well if you look at his recent stuff. He makes it look effortless. Like, I, I, I couldn't be able to do that. I would probably overthink it. I think that's all I have for digital art. There's software, tablets. Uh, get creative with it. Don't feel limited. And don't be intimidated, because everybody takes a long time to really get used to it all. So I've used a lot of different sketchbooks. The first couple sketchbooks that I had were just like Canson. Like I started off with those and those are probably like the best I've used. I just hate spiral bound sketchbooks. They're not stupid. I just don't like them because they, they look stupid. They're really practical because you can tear the pages out and they're always perforated and I you can like always- I feel. Yeah, I hate, I hate carrying around a spiral bound sketchbook because they're clunky 
Aesthetically, they they look stupid, but they're functional. <laughs> so I use like I switched to Moleskine, Moleskine. They're wonderful for sketching with pencil and for taking notes. But if you're trying to ink a comic, it takes forever for ink to sink into a Moleskine because the paper is like wax. Like I've, I've tried drawing comics on this, but it's so it's really annoying. Like it's really great for notes or, That's cool. or if you're like sketching or whatever, not for drawing. And then after that, I went over to this weird brand that was at the toy store that Brett works at. Yeah, I bought one for Mobius time because I needed a big sketch. Book, and then you got me these what is it row book rock book i think rock book but, but the way that you can google it uh, we'll show you some pictures but it's it's claire fontaine yeah that one is really 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 awesome they're just kind of big and then i got these like weird japanese notebooks that i, don't, I have no information on i just kind of bought them <laughs> And they're the best sketchbooks I've ever used because, like, the marker sinks in well, pens dry pretty quickly, and they're really good for sketching. I feel the paper. I'm always scared about. Yeah, like that thin, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, the ink doesn't sink through, but if I use a marker, you see it sinks through. Yeah. But you just, I just put it. another piece of paper there. Ah, true. I always use cardstock. I always have like a couple sheets of that because that's the best for drawing comics for me. I love drawing on just sheets that are just letter-sized sheets of cardstock. And those are amazing. I, don't know, I also used just plain old paper for a while to draw. Yeah, so I wanted, if we were talking about like paper, you said sketchbooks. When I started and when you started, we just used printer paper. Like back when we just drew printer yeah, paper. Yeah, that's when, when I started pencils. drawing like four years ago, five years ago. That's all I'd use. Yeah, I feel just like, stacks of that. I feel like a lot of people start that way. And then for pencils and pens, I don't, I don't use anything too fancy, to be honest. I use. <laughs> You use stuff that you could find at Staples. It's basically all Staples stuff, except for my Microns. Microns that you get, that you can get on Amazon and stuff. But for pencil, I just use a Zebra M301 to sketch with, and it's okay, I guess. I don't know. Same. There's nothing special about it, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'd rather, I'm going to start buying blue lead for it, because I just use black lead, and if blue lead's better when you're inking, it's easier to spot, like, a comic page. Also, just, like, a, a number two pencil, if it's not a sharp tip, like, it's kind of a worn-down soft tip, also works really, really, really well if you're doing, like, a comic sketch on paper, because it doesn't, like, a, a mechanical pencil you have to be really light with, because the pencil is so thin that it sometimes will, like, scratch the paper or whatever. So I had to learn to draw with a really light hand with the Zebra. But with a soft tip number two pencil, sketching is super easy and the lines look nice. It's just, it's, it makes it seem effortless and just soft and pretty. You want a pencil? Sure, thank you. I don't really like, like, same thing when we started with printer paper, I would use a number two. Very fine, very sharp, all the time. If it ever got blunt, I would go sharpen it. I wouldn't even use it all the way. I would always just keep it sharp, which I think is why I've always preferred mechanical pencils. I remember getting like a proper Faber-Castell set of sketch pencils, like a really nice set, and they all had like different uh, softnesses, um, different sort of darkness and shading, but I hated it because I couldn't keep them all sharp all the time. When I sharpened them, they kept on, the tips kept on breaking. I guess I was too rough with the hand sharpener, but it was just a pain to keep them in the tin to keep them sharp and just like well kept and so i've always preferred a mechanical pencil but i know that other people prefer like regular sketch pencils oh back to sketchbooks for a second i also randomly i wanted a like graph paper like thick notebook so i got one just off amazon i just searched up graph sketchbook and it's this like 400 page um engineering notebook and it's really 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 great for drawing on and sketching on i use it a lot it's normally either in my bag or on my desk and if you look at anything on my tumblr or on my twitter that's grid that's on a grid it's normally in that sketchbook and it's really good it's really great do you use the grid for any sort of like uh technical purposes when i when i do com pleasing? when i do comics in it sometimes like comics like this like when I, especially because i also use it for storyboarding mm -hmm. or thumbnailing a comic with like sizing because these are all kind of sized the same here's this actual comic that i colored in here yeah, but it definitely does help. Like, even though the panel borders are still a little shaky, they're they're in a line, and everything's the same size. On the subject of, like, graph paper, another thing that I hated as a kid, This again, this is just me sharing my opinion on stuff, was loose leaf. I hated sketching on loose leaf. You just lose all the loose leaf. I forgot how I was going to tie this into Dead Apple Toast, because she uses uh, line paper. She sketches on anything. Yeah, because most of her sketches are, like, at school and stuff, because, like, I'll talk to her... Like after school, Dead Apple Toast is a friend of mine. She's super talented and draws like so much. It is really awesome. 
but she draws a lot and just makes anything she draws on any kind of paper it just adds to how the drawing looks is that what you were trying to say like it... i was gonna say how much i respect her ability to not care what she uses or what she draws on because she just draws so yeah. much like her work ethic is super cool I, I couldn't not only do i have to plan out what i'm gonna do and i kind of get in my head before i draw every time but i'd never be able to draw on lined paper but for like pens since i like ink comics and things of course i use microns because everybody uses microns i don't like microns that much i'm gonna start switching over to something else or at least filling my microns with a different ink but well a friend of mine sent me a way on how to refill your microns or your favorite castell pens but i don't like them too much anymore because normally if i ink a comic and then i erase the pencils under the ink after like letting it sit for a couple hours if i erase too hard some of the ink comes up with it and that really really stinks because then i try to go over it again and then i mess up the line i don't know switching is going to be difficult because of the exact sizes and everything that they have but right now for like sketching i use like office pens they're pilot precise v5 and a v7 they're not super small but they're not really big pens they're they're nice enough for sketching and sometimes drawing comics if i were to do any freelance work or anything i wouldn't use them because the they're just they just don't look as good the line comes out uneven sometimes and it's not too great you have sketchbooks i got a lot of sketchbooks i kind of wanted it to be a little informative so let me see if i can compare these brands a little bit as much as i can i don't have too much and maybe i can quote some prices for you i think the first proper sketchbook that i had when i started going to the one art class when i was 13 uh, that was a canson um i i'm pretty positive everybody who's ever drawn seriously has used a canson um they're really good the paper's very it's like a really nice quality uh you can see the price right there so yeah i don't like paper that has much of a tooth when i'm sketching i feel like it dulls my line and it's I, kind of distracting i'm using a canson to draw well, at least like do a rough go over of the first chapter of 27 hellos because mm. the paper is pretty big and it's nice and it sinks in can well for those of you that don't know 27 hellos is one of bryce's uh, kick-ass projects that he's working it's on. a comic i'm trying to do it's really hard to draw a comic it's a super cool concept yeah because it, it's like it's a lot of chapters and i'm only halfway through the first one so canson's really good i think canson's probably like because like if you look up on amazon mm -hmm. you're gonna get canson sketchbooks first yeah. And like at most art stores, they have a bunch of cans and sketchbooks because they're good and they're reliable and nice. Yeah. Um, another one that I used to have a lot of them, um, particularly for their canvases and charcoal paper, uh, Strathmore. I think they're less expensive. I have nothing bad to say about them. I've always liked how they feel, but I never used them for pencils or uh, inking. I always use them for sort of thicker supplies, like charcoal, pastels, and some painting. But yeah, your sketch really good. Something interesting about your sketchbooks versus mine as well is that all of your sketchbooks look... Mine all look like books. Like, they're all bound, yeah. and they all look like, like books you find on a shelf, kind of, but thin. Yours look just like sketchbooks. Like, they're just... It's just that. a sketch pad. <laughs> yeah, it's a sketch pad. That's what it is. That's yeah, the yeah, difference. Yeah. Most of yours are sketch pads. Yeah, it's almost like that clipboard. Yeah, I can't bound. manage... I like... I really like having bound sketchbooks. And I guess the, co the complaint about having a bound sketchbook is that you can't take a bad page out but you can if you just like cut it if you just take like a hobby knife and you cut the page out i've done that before they also scan cool when you like scan in a page from this yeah just put it in the scan I, it just... I recently got um another a huge sketchbook from the company yeah this is like 400 pages or something bell o5 it says it's only 100 sheets it's a hundred sheets, but feel it because it's mixed. Oh, because the paper is so super, super thick. thick. But that's really, I don't know, that'll, I don't like that kind of paper. I think it might be Because if I take, if I take like the Pilot Precise pens, uh -huh. that'll clog the tip. Yeah. Recycled paper always clogs the tip on um, Pilot Precise pens. Yeah. I wouldn't recommend the one that I got for pens or something. It's it, The paper is recycled, so it's kind of loose. It's a little soft. It's super soft and <coughs> a bunch of bits will fall off when you ink. I just don't like it. Yeah. I've used a dip pen, a fountain pen and the the, preci the precision v7 yeah the pilot precise ones yeah and all of them if you have a soft sheet like from this sketchbook uh the pieces are going to clog it yeah that happened when i used when i used dip pen for the first time little paper i dance. used it on a recycled sketchbook and it's a really pretty sketchbook and it's nicely bound and everything mm -hmm. but i had to like be very soft and very careful and i had to clean the pen like four times and that was my very first time ever using a dip pen and it was really cool i don't i don't have any pictures of that piece because i sent it to a friend it was a samurai. Nice. Cool. That was also my first time using colored pencils, which I hate using. I hate colored pencils. They're so they're so hard to do, and whenever I try to do it, it's so ugly, and most of the time they look ugly. There are very few people who can do good colored pencils. Moving on to another company, 
So the, this company specifically does like literal supplies for artists. So they do stencils, they do forms, and a bunch of other little things. That's what I got them for. I don't know what else they do, but uh, Westcott. Now I want to. Uh, I w- I'm going to rip on a company that I bought something from. I don't know what their other products are. I'm just going to name this one thing. It's the Tombow dual brush pens. My problem with them was I had inked a picture and I just wanted to get some skin tones on there and I got the skin tone brush set. So it's just like any other marker uh, set. They're dual tips. So they got a felt tip and a brush and I used both and it was so, it was almost like it was um, water based. It was so loose and almost it was colorless and it made the paper very thin and I've never experienced this with my other markers like from Prismacolor or Faber-Castell um, and it it took my ink that I had put down and bled it all over the face and the arms and stuff. I've never experienced such a frustration like that and I really wanted some skin tone markers so I'm mad at Tombow. You should just do like Prismacolor. I, when I use markers I don't use color because I'm not good at color yet. As soon as I learn how to use grays which is what I'm using right now mm-hmm. I'll switch over to colors as soon as I know how to do that perfectly. But I use Prismacolor gray tones. I have a cool gray set I think and it's really nice and really great. I recommend those highly. Just Prismacolor markers in general are nice. Also, another note that I'm noticing between mine and Brett's supplies, Brett's supplies are like actual like art supplies, like like brush pens and stuff. Well, and a lot of this is carried over from when I went to art school. Yeah, you did art classes and stuff, and my stuff is just like, these are pens and these are pencils and this is paper, compared to this is a brush pen and this didn't. Like, it's very interesting how you have all this, like, I'm gonna say traditional art supplies and I have a bunch of like sketch supplies and some comic Let's stuff. The majority of this stuff is from that one year that I took an art class when I was 13. Yeah, I've never taken art classes. I've also been drawing for, like, way less time. Well, seriously drawing for way less time than Brett. Of course, everybody draws yeah, when they're a little Yeah, but you're way more kid. consistent and you work way harder. Yeah, I've only Brett's been drawing for a while, and I've only been drawing for, like, four years. And when I started drawing, like, seriously, in quotes, it, I just started drawing comics right away mm-hmm. and started posting them online, like, from the beginning, which I took down after a while because they're ugly. But I do draw comics. So what kind of... What kind of art supplies do your heroes use? I know that Urasawa does. Oh, by the way, we're talking about Naoki Urasawa. He does. He's a mangaka. Well, he's so good. He he did um, Plu- he did Pluto, which is the first one that we read. Then and then he did Monster, Twentieth Century Boys. He's doing Billy Bat right now, which is another good one. Um, Monster got made into an anime, and that's a super good show. It's so it's so good. And his storytelling and art is next level. He's he's really clever in his art. Super. It's like realistic, so it kind of looks like a real person, but it still looks like manga at the same time. It's really good. All of his stuff has been highly reviewed yeah. by critics. Oh, and he has a show called Monben in Japan. Um, Monben is like it's a show where Naoki Urasawa will record a manga art artist in their studio for a day and then he'll sit them down and they'll watch it together and they talk about their process while watching themselves work and a lot of them haven't seen themselves work so it's really interesting watching them do that i'll put a link to um the episodes and so informative and so interesting mom ben is awesome and he gets to interview like some really neat people like um and he gets like he gets like the most interesting people or like people have been doing it forever. So, yeah, Mon Ben's amazing. It's cool. great to get you exposed to like some really great mangaka. I, I think the closest thing to that in America is the podcast Ink Studs, but where there's interview cartoonists. Uh, the guy that runs sounds it. Sounds awesome. Yeah, it's really good. I forgot the guy. I'll also link to that. It's really awesome. And a guy that I kind of know, Brandon Graham, is one of the interviewers on it. Mm-hmm. And he does a lot of episodes. And they interview such amazing people like Liz Suburbia, Michael DeForge. Just so. It sounds uh, like a Star Trek name. It's so cool. Who? Michael DeForge. <laughs> He's the guy who um did the Ant Colony comic, the Ant comic that I showed you without any. Oh. Yeah. yeah he also he worked on Adventure Time. Uh, yeah. Let me let me bring it back for a second. So you asked me. We were talking about hero artists. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, and their supplies in the you, process. You asked me what did Urawasa use. Yeah. Now, the only thing that I know, I know he, he, I've seen him use micron pens. I've seen him use just typical. In Japan, they're called Sakura microns, I think. Sakura. And they're better quality than what we get in America. People normally go for the Japanese version. Sakuraofamerica.com. So I know he uses that, like pretty standard stuff. And then after he's done penciling and inking, he scans it and then uses not a Wacom. I think he uses a. a yeah, it has a bigger screen than the average Wacom too. Yeah, it has he a, has a, he huge, a huge screen, huge screened uh, LCD tablet, and he uses that to color. That's and it. his colors still look watercolory. Amazing, which yeah. is really neat. I, I don't know the what screen. the software is, unfortunately, but yeah, but still cool to know the process. Yeah, his process is neat, and it always looks so good. How about you? Do you know any art supplies um, that your heroes use? A dude I know, Michael Lee McDonald. He uses Faber Castell pens. 
I don't know what kind of pencil he uses, but he uses Faber-Castell pens that he refills with um, his own kind of ink that he likes. And then he just uses um, Canson sketchbooks. Nice. And all of his stuff is amazing. And when he colors, I think he has like a really small Wacom tablet, like not an LCD tablet, like a really small tablet. <laughs> and he used to use, I was talking to him, he used to use like a mouse to color his comics. Oh my God. And if you go to his, um, his Topastic comic 77, like all of the earlier ones in that were done by hand with a Faber-Castell with those pens. And then he would put it on his computer and then he'd color it with a mouse. And it doesn't look colored with a mouse because like they're not... They're not super colorful comics, but they look so good. They're very mobius -y. Another thing that I was thinking about before we started recording, I was like, I have to say this. Like, I know that all the artists I follow, and then when they uh, they do a Q&A, right? And the people always ask, like, what do you do this? How do you do that? And they're like, what's the best art supply? Or what's the top of the line this and that that you found? And the artist will always say, don't worry about that. Don't worry about too much how you're doing it. Just do it. So don't buy too... Like, that. I was trying to say that with... Um, when I was talking about the tablets that I've used, if, if you're just beginning and you're not getting paid for it, don't worry about it. It's okay. Just like, just do what you can with what you have. Mm -hmm. Take it slow. I think a lot of people like the older bamboo, like the silver model that I have. The one that you have? Yeah. A lot of people like that because it's big mm -hmm. and it was inexpensive and it worked really well. It also has a nice sort of... And the new bamboo is small. New bamboo design. is a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah. So people don't like it as much, I don't think. Yeah, and Wacom released the new, just the new Cintiq. And it's basically just a Windows tablet without a keyboard attached. Yeah, I also, like, a lot of people that I was looking at, like, who do comics for, like, DC or Marvel, mm -hmm. when they, like, thumbnail out their comic, they'll use, like, an iPad, and they'll have, like, Manga yeah. Studio on their iPad. And that works really well. But Manga Studio is expensive. It's, like, 300 yeah, it bucks, which isn't worth it unless you're getting paid. Do you know much about paints? I know zero about paint. Okay, the way that I approach <laughs> art when I draw, mm -hmm. I learned how to draw with a pencil pretty well, and I know how a pencil works. I learned how to draw with a pen, and now I know how a pen works. I'm learning how to draw with gray tone markers. As soon as I know how that works, I'll move to colored markers, and then I'll move to paints. And as soon as I learn how to use colored markers as well, I'm going to start mm -hmm. learning digital art. It's not something I want to learn all at once. I want to learn one thing at a time and master the simple things as I get up. Yeah. I don't know if this is related, but in my head, this is how I think of it. It's this Alex Toth quote. Paul Pope sent him a fan letter asking him for advice. And Alex Toth responded with, don't use a marker until you know how to use a brush. Like, always learn where things came from before you learn, like, the easy way. And that's how I saw digital art for a while. was like, I'm going to learn how to draw the hard thing, which is, like, paper ink and pencil before I learn how to draw with the easy thing in quotes. I also hate the idea of only having a file as my finished product. I think that's... As opposed to like a nice finished sheet. I love having like a manuscript of a comic. Having a bunch of files that I worked on feels weird and not cool and not I can, fun. I can understand that. Yeah, I don't want to take away the fun by saying this, but like art is like sort of an academic practice if you think about it. It's just like math or language or Art is a else. skill. So you have to, there is always a place to start and it, that's going to come naturally. Like you don't jump in and start doing a, a landscape painting. You, you start at the basics, right? Like everybody says, do shapes, do can, this, Can do I that. say that Ego Raptor quote? Ego Raptor is a Newgrounds artist who... One of the guys on Game Grumps, he's awesome. He's the Game Grumps. Well, yeah, he pretty much runs Game Grumps. He, when his co-host on Game Grumps, Dan, asked him, they were talking about drawing, and he was talking about how drawing is a skill. When he was asked, when the other guy said, I, I'm, I don't know how to draw, I can't draw, Aaron, well, Ego Raptor, very quickly said, I didn't come out of the pussy drawing fucking Mozart. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite quotes ever, because it it's funny as hell. Like, it's super funny. But also, it's like, yeah, you, nobody's born drawing well. I'm not going to say that it's always a skill. There's talent in art. There are some people who have a natural, natural yeah. artist's eye and can draw really well. And I know some of those people and it's frustrating and they're so good and they never know that they're as good as they are. I think also having an artist's eye is kind of a bit of a curse because you kind of always see that way. So you hate your art all the time even more because it's always just okay to you. Having like a natural artist's eye, like my friend Ava has a natural artist's eye and can draw amazing, like mm -hmm. super well is probably one of the best artists I know, and I look up to her art a lot. Like, she doesn't like her art as much as I think she should, and I wish she would just draw a comic and just, like, get it published. It'd be so easy for her to get published. But it's, like, this confidence barrier that a lot of artists have, and I think most artists that I know have confidence barrier. Like, even my mentor, Michael Lee McDonald, Al Alchem Michael, he's awesome, and I think he knows he's good, but whenever I call him great, he's like, nah, man, not there yet. I'm like, okay, if you say so, you guys are really great. 
Well, thanks for listening to that episode, guys. Thanks, everybody. Thanks yeah, for that, coming back. That was super fun. If we forget to link to like Art Supply or some or not show it, um, leave a comment and I'll try to I'll dig up a link on Amazon or something. I'll yeah, I'll send it off to you. Yeah. And as always, my uh, Twitter, Tumblr link uh, links are here. Rats are over there. So, and we'll put links in the description. Thank you for listening. Thanks, everybody. Bye. See you later.